Now, hopefully everyone's had their morning cup of coffee, and if not, I apologize in advance because this one's going to be quite a tough one otherwise. What we're going to dive into today is uh, Docker, and we're going to do something particularly crazy and, and unique in this respect. It, we're going to go ahead and put Power BI onto a Docker container. Now, this is not a supported thing, so keep in mind, uh, don't try to run this in production and say that you know you expect support. But what I've done is, just for the fun, I've created a Docker container using the regular Microsoft uh, original Windows container. I've gone ahead and then uh, added some environment variables which will be used for downloading the files. Uh, this way I don't need to manually type out the paths later on and I can adjust them in the Docker file should they change and that will then be reflected in the rest of the configuration without any additional changes. Um, the next part of this is we've gone ahead and said okay we're going to copy those uh, additional supporting files into our container this is the handling the installation steps and the permissions uh, then we're going to run the installation steps which is handled by two files and we're then going to do a health check which in this case is going to confirm whether or not the http is running and once it is it will report a healthy status and then finally we have a run command which will start off the whole process. Now don't worry about reading the individual files because frankly they'll be on GitHub and the link below will happily give you the option to look at them in depth yourself. What I just wanted to point out was some of the few things that were kind of niggling to me and I wanted to change and therefore away from other examples. So a lot of people use the invoke web expression when they're using downloads. I don't because it's slow and it's ridiculously slow sometimes. So here I'm using the new object, which is the .NET um, version of that in order to download files. It's much, much faster. I do suggest that you all start using it if you're not currently using it. Uh, the other one is that I'm starting most of my processes with a start process. Now the reason for this is I want that process to finish before I move on to the next line and occasionally it doesn't do that depending on how the executable is written. So I've gone ahead and basically added the start process to make it wait till that's finished. I've also done the installation of SQL and I've told it to slipstream the installation by copying the downloaded uh, cumulative update into the update folder and then run it and then finally remove any remaining files that are not needed to try and save space on the container which for those of you who work with docker would obviously be saying um, yeah it's a windows image so saving space is almost a lost cause to start with so anyway let's go ahead and start one up so first of all we'll prove that we're in the current directory where the rest of these files are and what we're going to do is we're going to run the build command. So this is a simple Docker build. We're going to give it a tag and we're going to tell it that we're going to run the file relative to the path, hence the dot not mini configuration path. Now, since this is already run, you'll see that basically it quickly processes it through memory. And as you can also see, all of the various lines and the rest, you know, it's, it's running from cache. But you can see all the steps that are in the file completed successfully on this machine. So no cheating, this is the same file that is up on GitHub. Now if I do a docker image I can see that I have my base image and I have the created uh, docker container image from my config. These are the only two on this machine. Obviously there would be more depending on how many other containers you're running but this is again just a demo. So what we're going to do next is start up the Docker container just with the minimum amount of parameters. So in this case, there are two mandatory parameters. Well, sorry, three. One is you have to accept the licensing agreement. That's a given. Um, you have to e expose the ports unless you don't want to do anything with the container at all. Um, and then you need to enter a username and password unless of course you've been watching previous videos and you're running this under a group managed service account in which case you could do this with a domain account but that would probably be something for another time anyway once that's fired off we're going to go ahead and see that we've got a health status now the health status itself in this case is saying starting and that's totally fine that's perfectly normal and depending on how long your application takes to start this could take some time 
um, as an example if you've got Tomcat and you've got raw files or raw files war, war files sorry war yeah lovely compression technique guys call it war anyway um, those can sometimes take a while to decompress depending on the size of your Java project pretty much the same principle with .NET applications depending on the size of your application and how many dependencies that it's got to load up uh, certainly with PowerShell um, it's not the fastest but in this case this is actually just a .NET application and Power BI is a good example of not being very fast so what we've got here is we're effectively waiting for the healthy status to change um, and you can see here it has actually changed to unhealthy that does happen from time to time not unusual because it's what it's done is it's run a couple of health checks and it's returned one and eventually we'll get one that says healthy uh, the reason it says unhealthy is because it's expecting there to be a healthy one and it hasn't had one within the predefined time limit or number of checks that it's expecting so you could up the time frame okay I've got it running every five seconds you might say 15 and then you might be able to skip that anyway our status is now healthy so we can go ahead to a web browser we'll go ahead and just open the local host slash reporting in order to check whether our server is up and running now there is one other thing I did want to mention and I, I realized it after recording this video since I'd already checked that this was working beforehand uh, my login credentials were cached so it logs straight in and therefore didn't prompt me and again if you were doing this with maybe a group managed service account uh, again maybe you wouldn't be prompted at all because you would be on the domain and the domain credentials would be passed so with that in mind uh, I'll leave it to you as to what you do with this example but I'm just proving that a you can install SQL 2019 on a Windows container and two you can also install Power BI on a Windows container <laughs>